Hello, and welcome to Great Companies, Great Leaders podcast. I'm Christine Gannon, your host. I'm the CEO and founder of Brightworks Consulting, and so excited to kick off this diversity talk series with Axon and Matt Caldwell. It's a series that will focus on Arizona's top employers and how they're focused on diversity and inclusion leads to better performance, increased innovation, and an enhanced ability to address their customers' needs, but it also includes a more vibrant culture. So they are building a more vibrant culture. So excited to kick this off with Axon, especially with Matt. We've had an opportunity to work together before. Super excited to to have him with us today. A little bit about Matt and his background. Matt started at Axon in the Leadership Development Program in September of 2020, and he has rotated in the program in a variety of roles, including the Interim Benefits Manager, the Program Manager for Axon's six employee affinity groups, and he now serves, congratulations, as the facilitator on the Learning and Development Team. Since leading Axon's affinity group programming, the groups have focused on joining forces and integrating programming to all benefits. To, all, to benefit all employees. Matt received his MBA from Rollins College in May of 2020, a certificate in diversity, equity, and inclusion from the University of South Florida in May of 2021. And in December of 2021, he became accredited to facilitate insights discovery. And when not working, Matt enjoys spending his time traveling and is always looking for a new adventure to take. So Matt, welcome. Thank you so much, Christine. I'm so excited to be here. So we're going to start with your shirt. We have to know what's on your shirt. For those of you that are on video, you can see it on YouTube. But if you're in audio, his shirt says, write code, save lives. What is that about? Yeah, so the mission of Axon is really what draws so many people to our organization. And it's quite simple. It's protect life. Every product that we're working on, every software, every service is focused on this mission of protecting life. We primarily partner with our law enforcement partners. We do have a consumer division. We want to make the community safer by protecting life without taking it. In that, one of our large software teams, you're not just writing code for a random project. You are writing code that's going to be used by dispatch teams that's going to be used by law enforcement to get to scenes faster, to be better equipped with more information, and truly every day at work, regardless of your role, be able to protect life. That is awesome. I love that. Protect life. That's very cool. We don't hear that very much right now. <laughs> so I love it. So let's stay on that theme. Talk to me a little bit about Axon and how you feel like it's demonstrating its commitment to DE&I right now. Yeah, so I think, you know, what's really amazing about Axon and our commitment to diversity and inclusion is you'll see it every day from day one. So in my role as facilitator, I am fortunate enough to get to meet all of our new hires on their first day. And we instill the importance of what we call JEDI, which is justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion on day one. We explain to our new hires how you can get involved in our affinity groups, what upcoming events they have to look forward to, and how Axon is giving back to the community. For us, it's not just a buzzword. It's truly integrated into the employee experience. We love the work that our affinity groups do and we know how much this matters every day to our employees. I love what you shared for so many reasons, but you just gave organizations who don't know where to start a couple of key areas where they could start, which is day one with new hires, right? Absolutely. I think most companies in their recruiting efforts are probably talking about the importance, but what does that look like on day one? Mm -hmm. That's when it really gets genuine. And you have this great opportunity to get your new hires excited to talk about what events are coming up and remind our new hires a really important point that I, we ask when we say several times, our affinity group programming is not only for identifying members of underserved communities, but for allies of those communities as well. 
And we actually turn off the PowerPoint during our presentation. Mm, point that's of the day. so and good. And we say, that means it's for everyone. We count the number of people on our NHO and say, if there's 42 of you or 29 of you, that means for all 29 of you, this programming is for you. And that's such an important concept, not just to our affinity group programming, but I think as we demonstrate our commitment, we recognize being more diverse, being more inclusive and fostering equity takes the part of everyone. It does. You mentioned so many things. One word I want to come back to is demonstrate. So it's one thing to have, like you said, a buzzword like Jedi or DEI or DEIA or DEIB. There's a million acronyms now that come together, all with the mission of fostering an inclusive culture, right? And an equitable culture and a diverse culture. But demonstrating that is often not tangible in organizations. And so Axon is definitely doing that in terms of demonstrating. And from day one, it is letting employees know that it's a commitment from the top and it's part of the DNA. It's not just a program checkbox, right? It's not just unconscious bias training and we're calling it good. It really is part of the DNA. So I really applaud Axon for doing that. I can see why you're a best employer. And um, I want to talk about employees for a minute. We were talking about new hires, but let's talk about employees. So you have ERGs. And ERGs are established as employee resource groups, for those of you that don't know the acronym. And, and why are they important to your company? What Tell us a little bit about Axon's ERGs and, and why they play a part. Yeah, so we have six employee resource groups. We name them employee affinity groups here at Axon. And they're so important to the employee experience because the mission brings people in, that mission yeah. of protect life, like we spoke about earlier, the community is what fosters people to stay. In this remote first environment, even if you're in one of our headquarters cities, but you're not coming into the office every day, I think people miss that sense of fun, that sense of education, that bond. It's especially important because our employee affinity groups foster that sense of community across teams, across different groups. We have events globally just next month, our LGBTQ plus and Asian Pacific Islander event. They're hosting a, an event in Vietnam. Wow. We have British motorsports champions speak to our resource groups. We know that in this environment, having that community is so important. Just last week, our women's group did a women's history trivia where we had people join asynchronously mm -hmm. and almost 100 employees played trivia learn some information, and we partnered with Dress for Success to make a donation. We see events like this in all six of our groups. And it's important for employees to know there's something great to look forward to. Bless you. Thank Not you. Not with our mission, but for them personally. There's something fun to look forward to. They can invite their families. They can play with their friends. And they can become better educated on issues that are now more than ever impacting our society. So as we think about that employee experience, the affinity groups are truly at the heart of that. Whether that's in person, we have really fun office spaces in Seattle, Scottsdale, Charlotte, across the globe, and we'll host dinner events and rooftop socials, bringing in guest speakers, but also virtually hosting you know, White House panelists and other really well-known guest speakers to connect with our employees. So, so many things you mentioned important in terms of creating that sense of connectivity. So connectivity to the community, but also connectivity to the company's mission, vision, strategy, and, and really expounding on that with your activities and, and really offering that connectivity. So I would guess you have a lot of participation. I would guess across the globe, when events are happening in place, especially you know, when we think about the environment that we're in, I never know if it's post-COVID or not, but the environment that we find ourselves in where people have either been away from the office, might still be hybrid, that that uh, that opportunity for connectivity is is sometimes missing. And so I'm I'm excited to hear that those are happening. Yeah, and we see great participation. I think one of the unique ways that we see that participation go up is our groups really work together. One of our core values at Axon is join forces. And 
our groups will post each other's events. They'll share best practices, what worked, what didn't. They'll you know, encourage their leaders and their members, even of different groups. Hey, you know, our Black Employee Resource Group is hosting an event today. You should attend. Or the Veterans Group will share that the LGBTQ plus group is hosting an event and you should attend. So we see participation really increase at our events because the individual members and the employees understand we're all one axon working to the mission of protect life and to build for racial equity, diversity, and inclusion, not just with the products and services that we make, but internally as a company. And I really think that that strategy of working together has truly equipped our groups to make the most positive impact. So you talked about joining forces. What are some other popular ERGs? Yeah, so for Axon, again, we have six. We have our Asian and Pacific Islander Alliance. We have OLA, which is our Hispanic origin and Latin Americans. Mosaic is our Black Employee Affinity Group. Axon Allies is our LGBTQ plus affinity group. And we also have women at Axon and veterans at Axon. Okay, wow. So you've covered, you've covered so many. And I'm sure if I was an employee, I could recommend a new one, right? If there was something that wasn't being covered. Absolutely. So we regularly work with employees who are interested. Maybe it's starting a new group. Our OLA group and our APIA group actually started just last year. And we have a process for this. And we also work with our employees. If there's, you know, I really want to speak about this issue, how can we incorporate that into our learning and development initiatives or an existing employee affinity group event so that we can quickly educate our organization and let our employees know that their voices are truly being heard? So a lot of companies reach out to us and ask us, how do we set up an ERG? And is an ERG just a time to come together for a potluck lunch or come together for a community activity? Like, what do you think is the key to success? When you think about those six affinity groups, what, what's a common thread or two that allows them to be successful? Yeah, it's a really good question. I would say the common thread is one, establish a sense of community and know that this is going to be a safe space. It might be an Axon sponsored event, but we don't have to talk about work. And the second piece, recognize that there's going to be different levels and different members in the community. We were speaking before the recording started this morning about the difference in culture between New England and Arizona. Right. Recognize that as a global organization, we're all going to come at this from different angles and different perspectives. And recognize there's such an importance in fostering that safe space where people can ask questions, people can learn more, and people can respect other people's experiences, either as an identifying member of an underserved community or as an ally. Having a place where it's safe for allies to listen matters. Mm -hmm. Having a place where it's safe for identifying members to connect and share their struggles matters. And it's really important not to give a prescriptive model to employee resource groups, but to let them form organically and adapt as our society continues to evolve. Do the ERGs have goals? Yes. So every year, each of our affinity groups meets and establishes goals. They strategically plan for events. And some of these goals may be less tangible. It might be, you know, foster a sense of community, host an asynchronous event where people aren't having to join a Zoom meeting, but they're able to participate in a bingo card game and send a picture of their completed card where they've done activities or play a trivia that they do on their own time. So, but each of our groups does have goals every year in addition to our organization's goals. Awesome. And I love how they're connected. So nothing feels disconnected. It's all really connected to one another. And while everyone has a, you know, a mission related to maybe those ERGs, it connects to the overall axon mission, which is super important. Absolutely. And that's why we really foster that protect life mm. mission from day one, even from before day one. And it's so important to the work that our affinity groups are doing. As right. we're building new products and services, we want 
the items Axon is pushing out to be for all members of the community. Our customer is not just law enforcement. Our right. customer is every person that law enforcement comes into contact with. And so as we have these groups, as we have these listening sessions, it's so important, again, not just for the internal employee experience, but for what we're actually building for the community. Absolutely. So two things I'm reminded of that I heard you talk about. Stephen Covey in his seven steps said, seek first to understand. And that's a large part of this, right? In terms of we're not seeing through the same lens potentially because of our culture, our background and what experiences we've had. But if we seek to understand one another, we can build that community, right? We can build that peaceful community. And then the second thing I was reminded of as you were talking is American Express many years ago, and I think it's still part of their value value system, uh, their top value was um, assume positive intent. So not only are you seeking to understand, but assuming positive intent with the people that you're working with and interacting with and your clients above all in terms of the lens that you look through is really, how can I understand you? Help me understand you. But then I'm going to assume positive intent about our interaction and then go from there. Absolutely. And I think as we think about that word equity, mm -hmm. that's such an important part of employee resource groups. You know, you have that positive intent, you seek to understand. You know, an example of this, our groups will host in-person food events for our Seattle and Scottsdale offices, but we might have employees that aren't based in mm. Scottsdale and Seattle. And so as I think about equity and equality, if we're looking strictly at a return on investment perspective, we might be paying you know, $10 per person for someone to go to one of these events in person. But if I were to send an employee a $10 Uber Eats card and say, oh, here's what you can get for dinner, that would be equal. It absolutely would. But it really wouldn't be equitable because right. what would that employee that's at a remote location be able to really receive? So we might send them more. And we do this regularly for our hybrid remote employees so that we can foster that equity because we've listened and we know that our employees want to participate in a taste of culture. So we focus on that equity. And I think that seeking to understand is so, so important. And that's why allyship, another point mm -hmm. there, is so important. There are times when we will have members join in on a call just to listen and to learn. And if you have questions, you can ask those questions in a safe space. But a lot of it, even myself, I'm reminded at almost every event, new principles, new perspectives that really build us as leaders, not just in our organization, but as people that go out into the community. I'm really proud of what our groups do, not just make our employees better in their day-to-day -day roles, but thinking about the lessons that we've been able to facilitate that our employees can take with them even outside of office. So really making a difference in your community at the local level. Absolutely. So a couple questions as we finish up our podcast. I feel like we could talk for an hour, but <laughs> here's two, two questions for you to consider. One, why do you think um, Axon is a great place to work for a diverse candidate? I would say there's three reasons why Axon is a great place to work for a diverse candidate. The first we are mission driven. We have talked about it all morning and it is true. That is not just something you'll see on a marketing flyer. It is embedded into every project we take on both internally and externally. So if you want to work somewhere where your mission matters, the mission of protecting life, getting everyone home safe, Axon is a great place to do that. Second, we need you. We have over 300 open roles on axon.com slash careers. Oh my goodness. And we are actively hiring for those. We're continuing to grow as the needs of public safety continue to evolve. And we need our workforce to reflect the diversity of the communities that we serve. We need your opinions. We need your perspectives. Expect candor is one of our core values. Aiming far, owning it. Even in the program I was in as a leadership development program, our current COO was part of that program. So the growth opportunity is there. Finally, as you and I have said a few times here at Axon, DEI, all of these other great acronyms, they're not just words. 
you're going to see it infused into what we do on day one. You'll see our executives join Zoom calls wearing Black History Month shirts, wearing Hispanic Heritage Month shirts, wearing Pride shirts in solidarity with those communities. You're going to see DEI at Axon every day from every team. And in our external products, you should want to work with Axon. I encourage all candidates to apply because we live out our values in everything that we do in building for racial equity, diversity, and inclusion. Fantastic. Awesome. I don't know why anyone listening wouldn't apply. Here's what we know during the great resignation or the great reflection or people quietly quitting, right? All the buzzwords right now is right. that employees or pros prospective employees are looking at organizations who have DE&I programming in place and that it's working and that it isn't just a title and a program name, but that it's actually working. And they're actually making you know, decisions about their careers based on what's happening at that organization and actually doing the research related to it. So I applaud Axon, I applaud you. Congratulations in your new role. My last question for you, it's a little bit of a curveball, but I know uh -oh. you know. <laughs> Who's your hero? Who is my hero? Well, I'll go to one of my favorite quotes, I guess. My favorite quote is from Maya Angelou and it actually, uh, this is a curveball, but I, I can't think of one that relates better to what we're doing. You just mentioned quiet quitting. You just mentioned this great resignation. You know, and her quote is, people might forget specifically what you said, mm. they might forget specifically what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. T to tie that back into what we've been speaking about, to tie that into employee experience, the specific event, was it, you know, a bingo event or a Jeopardy event? Might not remember. Might not remember the exact words of that guest speaker, might not remember the full PowerPoint or what conversations they had on our rooftop event, but I guarantee you, there is an intangible value that people will never forget the way they've been made to feel. And when you're working in an organization that's this mission driven, our whole goal and what I hope everyone's goal is in their employee resource group programming is to make their employees feel both included, that sense of belonging, and they'll feel retained based off the efforts that you're working on. And that should be your number one goal. So I would say Maya Angelou. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Matt, for being with us. Congrats to Axon for being a leader in this space. And thank you for being the first in a series to talk about diversity and companies that are hitting it out of the ballpark and doing an amazing job. Really appreciate you being with us. And thank you, Christine. This is such an important topic and we are truly honored uh, to be a part of it. So thank you for all of your work. Absolutely. Brightworks Consulting hosts this podcast and YouTube channel to spotlight the leadership around the world that is changing lives. Brightworks offers a myriad of consulting services in the public and private sector to include diversity, equity, and inclusion solutions for any size company. You can find us at www.brightworksconsulting.com. We're honored to have Best Companies AZ as a presenting sponsor for this podcast. Best Companies AZ is your number one source for regional employer branding. You can find them at www.bestcompaniesaz.com.